What's going on guys? This is Coach Greg Souders from Standard Jiu Jitsu. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at our all levels class. The main difference between our foundations class and our all levels class is the amount of variation that we use in a given practice. The variation in the all levels class is centered around playing small aspects of the whole and entire game every day. In every all levels class, we include guarded situations, pinning situations chest to chest, and pinning situations chest to back. In this video, you'll see an example of how we organize those into a single practice. All right, all right, about for me. Our first rounds, breaking and back taking. We're gonna explore this from two connections. The first connection we're gonna explore this from is any entanglement. So in these games today, you can start in the entanglement of your choice. Now, for those of you guys who are new to entanglements in general, I'm gonna give a scaling focus, okay? So starting in any entanglement, doesn't matter which one you start in, your first focus, no matter what else happens hereafter, is twofold. One, stay as close to your partner as you can while you're working and maintain hip attachment. All this means is your leg connection, no matter what it is, no matter what it looks like, needs to stay close to your partner's hip as possible. I don't care what you explore, but you're trying to stay as close as you can and stay attached to the hips. Your second point of focus while doing this, if you, need, if you want more, if that's still too easy, is focus on always trying to access both legs as a precursor to heel exposure. So while you're staying close and staying attached to the hip, search, search for both legs. Once you have both legs, it's gonna make it very difficult for the person to, person to defend what's happening, and you can explore from there. And then finally, if you're new to heel hooking itself, no matter what attachment you have, while you're staying attached, staying close, and interacting with the secondary leg, we're looking to capture our partner's toes. What we mean by capture our partner's toes is literally try to capture your partner's toes with your arm and body or any way that you can. So those are your points of focus today. Now as you're doing this, to win the game, you have to finish on your partner's legs or come up and take your partner's back. You guys understand? Top player, the, only, the way that you win this game is through negation, freeing your leg, counter submission, or passing your partner's legs. Flip flop every time somebody wins. Let's go, one, two, three. In this first game, I have my students focusing on mixing the effects of finishing on the legs and taking our opponents back. But before we're able to teach our students how to get to these larger objectives, we have to first organize them around the simple behaviors that make the other two possible. Now, there's a couple things I want you to think about as you watch this video. One, all the language that I'm using is relative to my room. Remember, there are no one size fits all games. We start with any game with definition, objective and task focus, and we get our students playing. As they play, we use what we see in front of us as coaches to change the task behaviors as we move forward. The second thing I want you to note is the tasks were very simple. They weren't complex, they weren't how-tos, they were just intentions with areas of focus so our students could explore the effect of their behaviors on their own. If any of you heard me speak before, we talk about one of the foundations of jiu-jitsu being making and maintaining connection. And this is what our students are doing here today. Even though this is an all levels class and it's more advanced, we can still take that simple concept and we can apply it across a wide range of behaviors. So for the first task, stay connected to your opponent's hip and get as close as you can. This is an example of making and maintaining connection, but rather than being a general approach, it's more specific. Search here, make and maintain your connections here. No matter how specific the three tasks were, they were all examples of making and maintaining connection. Now, as you watch this video, I want you to take note. As each student performs these actions, they look different. It's up to the student to determine which task is most important to them at any given time. Sometimes it's the first one, stay attached to the hips and stay close. Sometimes it's stay attached to both legs. And other times it's capture the toes. And the only way they can know this is as they attempt to do one or the other, they will receive resistance. And that resistance will be what guides them into their next behavior. This is how we turn simple behaviors into complex behaviors. Now, again, we're continuing the breaking and back taking, but this time we're gonna switch to the arm. Bottom player is gonna start on their side. Top player is gonna start with a figure four grip. So everyone in this room coming out of the foundation you should know what a figure four grip is. So if you don't know, make sure you are looking now because I'm not gonna explain it beyond showing it. 
Now, just like attachment to the legs, if you're new to this engagement, the first thing, the first task you work on is staying close. We need to keep our hips as close to our partner's shoulder at all times if we want to be able to threaten and control this limb. So your first task focus is from the figure four grip, stay as close to your partner's shoulders with your hips as humanly possible. Now, the second focus is we're gonna try to keep this arm separated from everything that it can touch, okay? That means the body and that means the other arm, that means the other leg. We wanna try to get this hand separated from everything that it can attach to. And then finally, once it gets separated, you're gonna to try to work your way towards submission. Okay, now, we don't have to stay with the Kimura grip. However, you do have to switch from threat to threat to threat. So you can turn a twisting lock to a straight lock. You can turn either into a strangle, but there can't be lag time in between. Okay, so again, stay close. Try to separate the hand from everything else, and then it's up to you what you do with it from here on out. If nothing else happens, as long as you perform those first two things, you're doing great, okay? But like I said, either way, we can turn this into a straight and continue to fight, or we can turn this into a strangle and continue to fight. As long as there's threat present, we continue. If at any time we lose at all, we lose. The second way to win this game is, like I said before, back taking. So again, submit or back take wins you the game. Bottom player, all you have to do is get free of threat and hide your back. Let's go, one, two, three. Keeping with the theme of breaking and back taking, the next game we played, rather than starting our students on the legs, we started our students on the arms. Now, the theme is the same. So the objective is to finish a submission on your opponent by starting with an arm connection or take the back to win. And just like before, this general objective allows the whole class to focus their attention on what they're trying to achieve. And just like the previous game, the task focuses that I chose were ones that I thought would be important to our room. So we started in a very foundational way because we have a lot of new people coming over from the fundamentals class and entering the all levels class for the first time. So these task focuses are stay attached to your partner's shoulder by staying as close as you can. And task two is to separate the defending player's hands so the arm becomes twistable. As we are focused on those two tasks, the students could decide from there what would get them closest to a threatening position where they could submit their opponent or to their opponent's back. Part of the general objective that I gave was we have to use the figure four grip to continue threatening our opponent for submission. This means turning a twisting lock into a straight lock or turning either into a strangle. This allows the students to start to explore the relationship between those three potential submission outcomes. And the two task focuses of staying attached to the shoulder and separating the hands helps them start that process. You have to understand that we can't solve every problem that's gonna arise in this situation today. Instead, we're presenting an initial problem, we're giving an outcome, and we're giving two task focuses to let the students start to explore these exchanges. As the weeks and days go by, and I watch my room, I'll determine where we go from these initial task focuses. But just getting them started moving, just getting them started towards an objective is how we start the learning process. Now, we're gonna work from a side control situation where the bottom player is gonna start on their side and the top player has the hips controlled by wrapping our arm around our partner's hip. Now, we're gonna be lined up on the same line as our opponent. This is where we're starting, okay? So, our main two tasks that we're gonna be trying to perform here is first, we wanna remove the hands. We do not wanna let the bottom player push on us. So. As we stay as close to our partner's hips as possible, our first task is to make sure we beat the hands. So as your partner's hands come up at you, you have to remove them. Now as you remove the hands, we're trying to get as close to chest as chest as possible so we can keep the hands off of us. Now, your second task focus is to search for underhooks while you're doing this. I want you to pay special attention and I want you to prioritize underhooking the bottom arm. Okay, we're gonna prioritize this one. We'll talk about why later. But the idea is that at any time, if that underhook becomes present, build a base, we are gonna prioritize getting that underhook even above the top. Okay, now, once you focus on those tasks, stay close to the hips, keep the hands off you, and search for underhooks, prioritizing the bottom underhook. From there, you do whatever you want. Your job is to submit your partner to win. 
but I want you to use that initial procedure to find your opportunity for submission, okay? Bottom player's job, seated open guard or standing guard or standing recovery only, okay? Of course, reversals at any time are a win. So again, reversal, seated open guard recovery or standing wins it for the bottom player. Let's go, one, two, three. In this third game, just like the previous two, we were helping our students understand the effects of their ability to make and maintain connection to their opponent. Rather than start out on the periphery, i.e. the arms, legs, or head, we're having them start at the hips. Hips are one aspect of center mass. Center mass is defined as the hips, the shoulders, the chest, and the back. So in this game, the top player's job was to start to control center mass by starting at the hips. The first task focus was to remove their opponent's hands. The idea here is that the bottom player will use the pushing of their arms or the extension of their arms as a way to create space. So if the top player is able to remove the hands, they remove the threat of the bottom player's push. The second task focus was to get under or behind the elbows. This starts the process of isolating the arms by removing them from the body as defensive structures. So getting our students to explore the segmentation process of removing what's pushing on you, i.e. the hands, and then getting under the elbows is a strong precursor to alignments that allow for submission. After these two task focuses are achieved, the rest of what the student focuses on is completely up to them. We're not trying to solve all problems. We're getting our students started in one area so they can see the effect of their actions and how it leads to the objective set in the game. And just like the previous games, there is no one size fits all. As a coach, my responsibility is to watch how these games play out and ask myself, did the language that I use help increase my students' focus of intention and attention? Are they able to explore the environment while producing the effects that I'm looking for? If not, if we ever play this game again, I might have to change my language and I might have to change the task focus. So consider this as you continue to watch this clip. All right, last situation. Bottom player, all fours. Top player, connection around the waist. Now, our job here from the top is just to submit from any pin, okay? That's the major objective of this game, okay? Chest to chest, chest to back, we're trying to submit our opponent. However, if you're new to this engagement, the first task I want you to focus on is when you're behind your partner, no matter what, I always wanna stay higher than my opponent's back. What I mean by this is, no matter how my partner changes their position, stand up for me, dude. I always want to stay taller, more, more, more. I always want to stay taller than my opponent. If at any time you fall, your, uh, you see yourself falling below your opponent, bad, okay? So, first task, maintain hip height as your partner changes hip height, okay? That has to stay the same at all times. The second focus I want you to try to do when you're staying attached to the hips is to break your partner off their base, okay? So we think of it as segmentation as we're passing. Feet, knees to hips, hands, elbows to shoulders. So any way that you can, use your connections or change your connections to break your partner down as you work. So those are the two major task focuses I want you to focus on as you play. Again, when you stay attached to the hips, main relative hip, hip height, so you're always above. And two, remove bases. If they're on their feet, take them to their knees. If they're on their knees, take them to their hip. If they're on their hands, take them to their elbows. If they're on their elbows, take them to their shoulders as you look for opportunities to submit. Bottom player wins only two ways, or sorry, three ways. Seated open guard, standing and turn to face, or reversal. Foot flop every time, one, two, three. As you watch this fourth game, I hope by now you can see the common string throughout the class. The task objective was pretty much the same in every single game. We either had to submit our opponent or we had to take their back. In each game, we started connected somewhere to our opponent. We went from peripheral connections, first game being the legs, second game being the arms, and the third game being the hips. Now in this fourth game, we're gonna start in a similar manner. We're gonna start connected to the hips, but rather than front facing like we did before, now we're starting rear facing. In each of these games, we allowed our student to explore the effect of their connections. And the task focuses given were relevant to each of these situations. What effects do we need to produce in any given situation to allow our students to progress towards the end objective? Now in this game, the task was to break your opponent off their base points. 
If they're on their feet, take them to their knees. If they're on their knees, take them to their hips. If they're on their hands, take them to their elbow. If they're on their elbow, take them to their shoulders. The idea here is that as we get our opponent closer to the ground, we're closer to holding them more still than not. An all fours player uses movement to defend themselves. So if we help our students focus on the task of removing base points, we also remove the bottom player's ability to become mobile. Once our student performs the task, just like in all the other games, they're now exploring open territory to see what effects these tasks had as it led towards the overall objective. So this is why I chose the tasks that I chose. And like I've said in all previous games, the job isn't to solve all the problems our students are gonna to face today. The job is to give them tasks that will help them get towards the objectives I ultimately want them to achieve. So again, as these weeks progress, as we use games that are similar, there's no one size fits all. We get our students focused on any task that's associated with foundational behavior. This week has been make and maintain connections, but there are other foundations that we can explore using this similar train of thought. I hope this video serves as a good example of how we increase variation between our foundations program and our all levels. And I hope that you can see how we use these small sided games to play the whole game of jujitsu every day. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Until next time.